This is Phil Kopman with an overview of automated vehicle terminology, including the SAE J3016 levels. In this talk, I'll start with a guide to SAE J3016 terminology and address an important point, which is that SAE J3016 is a terminology standard, not a safety standard. I'll go on to explain the SAE levels, which are perhaps not quite what you thought, and I'll debunk a number of myths that have arisen about things that are said to be in the standard but actually are not in the standard at all. I'll also include a different way to look at automation modes that might be more suitable for non-engineering audiences. Let's start with some basic terminology from SAE J3016. I'm referring to the April 2021 version of the standard. Be careful when you look for the standard to always get the latest version. These are summary definitions. If you need an authoritative, perfectly worded definition, you should always go to the standard. The first term is ODD, Operational Design Domain. The ODD is the environment the system is designed to work within. That would include not only geographic constraints, but also lighting, weather, and other factors of the environment that the system is intended to be able to handle. OEDR, Object and Event Detection and Response. This is generally the idea that the vehicle is looking at what's happening around it and planning responses to it. That includes not only the roadway environment, but also other objects such as other vehicles, vulnerable road users, and so on. DDT is the dynamic driving task. That's when the vehicle actually does the driving. That includes moving the vehicle, both in speed and direction, performing the OEDR, and planning to avoid crashes. An ADS, an automated driving system, is a computer-based system that is able to completely perform the dynamic driving task DDT. This means that in normal conditions, one puts an ADS into a vehicle, and the ADS's job is to perform the dynamic driving task at least. That gets you an SA Level 3 or higher vehicle. Fallback is operating the vehicle when something goes wrong. For example, if the ADS fails or you exit the ODD, there may be a need for a driver to take over operation of the vehicle. That's called a fallback operation. Finally, MRC, minimal risk condition. This is the idea of bringing a vehicle eventually to a stop as part of a fallback operation. Summarizing these terms, an automated vehicle operates within an operational design domain. It performs object and event detection response, OEDR, as well as controlling the vehicle. Those two things together give you the dynamic driving task, which is performed by the automated driving system. If something goes wrong, a fallback operation is required to bring the vehicle to a minimal risk condition. Here's a quick guide to the levels specified in the SAE J3016 standard. Level zero is a traditional car with no automation capability beyond something like a fixed speed cruise control. Level one is a smart cruise control system or other system that can control the speed or the steering of the vehicle, but for most cars that usually means smart cruise control. Level two is an autopilot type system. That means that it does both automated lane keeping and also adaptive cruise control which means automated distance keeping from other vehicles on the road. The final responsibility for OEDR rests on the driver. It is essential that the driver in a level two system continuously pays attention to the roadway and is ready to react at a moment's notice to take control. Level three is a human fallback driver. The difference between level two and level three is that at level three, the vehicle performs the entire dynamic driving task, DDT, including OEDR, but not the fallback task. There's a subtlety here that's important. Sometimes one hears that level three has to do with the vehicle telling the driver to take control. That can happen sometimes, but might not happen because part of the fallback task is noticing that something's wrong with the vehicle even if the ADS misses it. At level three, the human is still entirely responsible for safety if something goes wrong while the vehicle is responsible for driving properly in the absence of some sort of failure. At level four, the vehicle is completely automated within a limited operational design domain, ODD. 
the automated driving system ADS has to handle the entire dynamic driving task and fallback. That means it's only at level four where the human driver can truly go to sleep in the back seat and not worry about the driving because the entire responsibility for driving and driving safety falls on the ADS at level four. Level five is associated with automated driving on an unlimited ODD, but the ODD is in fact limited to things such as paved drivable roads. Level five does not address route planning, passenger safety, cargo safety, and other aspects of safety that are relevant to an automated vehicle, but are not specifically associated with the dynamic driving task and fallback responsibility. There are a number of terms in common use that don't actually mean anything according to J3016 or otherwise are confusing. The first one is the use of the word automated versus autonomous. J3016 always uses the word automated and says you should never use autonomous. On the other hand, ANSI UL4600, which is an autonomous vehicle safety standard, uses the term autonomous to refer to the whole vehicle, which is a bigger scope than just the ADS covered in J3016. Which word is preferred often depends on the background of the person using the word, and generally it can be difficult to make distinctions between these depending on the audience. For practical purposes, unless there is a clear distinction made, it is very common for automated and autonomous to mean the same thing depending on which audience you're addressing. The term autopilot is neither defined nor used in J3016 and in general just means there's something automated going on. The terms robotic and robotaxi are not used in J3016. The term driverless vehicle is not used in J3016 although the term driverless operation is okay and means that there is no driver currently controlling the vehicle. The term self-driving is also not used in J3016. In general, when people use the words autopilot, robotaxi, driverless vehicle, or self-driving, they're using a term not defined in J3016 that often doesn't really mean much at all other than there's some sort of automation going on. A potential significant limitation to SAJ3016 is that it is a very engineering-oriented standard. It has to do with which functions are assigned to the driver and which functions are assigned to the ADS. But the functions are not necessarily intuitive to a person. For example, deciding when a vehicle failure is sufficient that the ADS cannot handle it, even though the ADS doesn't tell you it can't handle it, is not the type of thing that is very intuitive to a person. To address the needs of clearly communicating to a driver what their responsibilities are, I've created the Vehicle Automations Mode chart. It has four different modes. The first is assistive, in which the vehicle can help the driver drive, but ultimately it is the driver who's driving and who is responsible for safety. This generally corresponds to SA levels 0 and 1. The next mode is supervised. Supervised means the human driver keeps eyes on the road. The vehicle's doing the driving, but the human driver is responsible for driving safety. This generally corresponds to SAE levels two and three. At level three, even though the vehicle's solely responsible for the driving task, the human is still tasked with continuous supervision to take over if needed, and that makes it a supervised system. The third mode is automated. In automated mode, the human is allowed to have eyes off the road. The vehicle is driving and it's responsible for driving safety, but the human passenger is responsible for other aspects of safety, such as occupant safety, cargo safety. In general, there's still an expectation a human is in the vehicle and takes charge for things the vehicle can't handle, such as, for example, managing a post-crash accident scene. For an autonomous system, there's no expectation of a human driver present, either inside or remotely for the vehicle. The vehicle drives, the vehicle's in charge of driving safety, and the vehicle's in charge of all other aspects of safety. That does not mean there's no possibility of a human intervention. What it means is that if there's a situation that requires human intervention, it's the vehicle's responsibility to figure out it needs help and to reach out to get help. In the vehicle automation modes approach, there's a clear distinction between 
when a person is responsible for driving or driving safety and when the vehicle is responsible for driving safety. In assistive and supervised modes, there is a person in charge of driving safety. That person must pay attention continuously and is ultimately responsible for driving safety. In automated and autonomous modes, the person is not tasked with any aspect of driving safety. Rather, it is entirely on the vehicle to make sure that all driving is done safely. Now that we've reviewed the SA levels and also the automation modes, let's take a look at the types of systems that are currently on the road. Autopilot type systems have lane keeping and adaptive cruise control, so they control steering and also distance keeping from lead vehicles. However, they're not expected to be able to deal with anything possible that can happen on the road when they're operating. Given that, Tesla Autopilot is an SAE Level 2 supervised system. Tesla Full Self-Driving is still an SAE Level 2 supervised system wrapped up in an aggressive marketing campaign. The reality is that if the car maker tells you that a driver must pay attention to driving, at best, that is an SAE Level 2 system. The Porsche Taycan is also a Level 2 supervised system, and so is Cadillac Super Cruise. There are some systems coming onto the road that are potentially higher level. The low-speed automated lane keeping ALKS systems, which have been announced by a couple of companies but have not been extensively spotted in the wild, might be SAE Level 3, and the question there is whether or not the driver is held responsible for a driving failure when the system is engaged. The Waymo robo-taxis are said to operate without constant human supervision, either locally or remote, and that makes them perhaps an SAE Level 4 autonomous system. Let's go over some of the top myths regarding J3016. These are not problems inside the standard, but rather misperceptions and incorrect statements about the standard that one often sees in discussion and even the press sometimes. The first myth is that ODD means geofencing. An operational design domain often is geographically restricted, but other factors such as lighting day-night, weather, infrastructure failures, and so on are also part of the ODD. So there's much more to this than just geofencing. Another myth is that higher SAE J3016 levels are necessarily safer. Most importantly, 3016 is not a safety standard. And in particular, SAE levels two and three are quite problematic as defined because they require a human driver to supervise automation and humans are not very good at doing this. Higher levels introduce more automation but are not necessarily safer. And by the way, level two plus is meaningless. 3016 prohibits the use of fractional levels. So if you say you have a level two plus, which makes it better than a level two system, that doesn't actually mean anything. Another myth is that driver backs up the ADS object detection level three. People will say, well, it's a level three system, but if something goes wrong, the driver's supposed to notice. That cannot be true because level three by definition handles all objects and events and plans responses to them. If a driver can be blamed for not intervening during the normal driving task, that is by definition a level two system. Continuing the discussion of SAE J3016 myths, it is a myth that level three always provides 10 seconds of delay time for a human driver to take over. The standard does not say 10 seconds anywhere. It says at least several seconds, but that might be three seconds. There's also zero warning time for an evident vehicle failure. So if you have a tire blowout, there may be zero delay and warning, and the vehicle may insist that you take over immediately, even though the ADS does not tell you anything's wrong. There's also no requirement to maintain safety if the driver does not take over. If you have a system that says, well, we want you to take over, but if you do not take over, we will still guarantee to bring you to a safe stop. That is not a level three system. That's actually a level four system by 3016 definition. Another myth is that level three means eyes off road. Eyes off road for level three was commonly stated for a while, but the standard does not say that anywhere. Moreover, even though the ADS at level three does the whole dynamic driving task, 
the driver still needs situational awareness to handle vehicle failures. I would not want to be a driver who's engrossed in a movie not paying attention and then has to instantly take control of the vehicle, maneuver in traffic, and do the right thing if the tire blows out and your only notice is the thump from the tire blowing out. There are a couple of other top automated vehicle myths that while not specific to J3016, are very much worth debunking. The first is the myth that 94% of crashes are driver error. If you've been following AVs, you've no doubt heard that repeated endlessly. But in fact, the study that that number comes from does not actually say that. What it says is that human drivers played some role in 94% of crashes. Yes, some of those are drunk driving. Yes, some of them are other human frailties. But it, there are also some things in the data that in which the human driver failed to prevent a crash because something else went wrong. Or a human driver made a mistake that it's pretty likely an automated driving system could also make. Many of these mistakes were recognition errors and decision errors. And if you're using a machine learning based system, at this point, there's no way to guarantee those systems will not also make recognition and decision errors. So while it may be true that humans contributed directly or indirectly to 94% of crashes, it is incorrect to conclude that machines will therefore eliminate 94% of crashes. That's not what that number means. Another myth is that automated vehicles don't drive drunk, so they will be safer. The reality is that machine learning based systems lack common sense, so they are very likely to make different mistakes. There is insufficient data to know how this will turn out. In the end, one hopes that machine driven vehicles will be better than human drivers, but as of this point, there is no concrete proof that that will actually be true anytime soon. If you look at existing level two vehicle data, Remember, that's human plus machine together safety, not fully autonomous vehicle safety. There's still a human as a backstop, so that number does not predict, either for better or worse, how fully automated vehicles will turn out. Summarizing where J3016 fits in the automated vehicle space, J3016 is a terminology standards document. It defines terms, but it is not a safety standard. It also defines levels, but those levels may not match what is actually built, because if you build just especially the level two and level three vehicles with no additional features not required by the levels, it might well be your system is not safe enough to deploy in the real world. Specifically, driver monitoring is not required by J3016, but in practice is almost certainly required to achieve safe vehicle deployment. There's plenty of misleading and incorrect information circulating about J3016, information that the standard does not actually say, but which is widely attributed to be inside the standard. Understanding the myths and interpretation listed at this website is a good way to make sure that such misunderstandings do not creep into regulation, news stories, or other uses of this standard. Because safely designed real vehicles are unlikely to exactly match the levels and in general have additional things such as driver monitoring installed, regulating or legislating using just the levels is probably a bad idea. If you say a vehicle needs to meet SAE level three or SAE level two, that may be specifying a vehicle that's not really safe enough to be put on public roads. It's true that a system with driver monitoring might be level two, but level two does not mean that you necessarily have driver monitoring. Rather than trying to regulate or legislate based on the levels, it may be a much better idea to concentrate on driver roles and responsibilities, such as, for example, done by the vehicle automation modes chart. It's important to have a clear statement of driver responsibility that is compatible with what people can actually do and with their understanding of the technology. Most importantly, don't let people get used as moral crumple zones. Don't ever put a human driver in a position where they don't understand what's going on or you're asking humans to have superhuman ability to monitor automation, which we know people are bad at, and then blame them when there's a bad outcome. 